Hi, my name is Stephen Sindoni. Thank you for tuning in to the broadcast of Arctic Secrets Revealed. In today's program, I will put the spotlight on the Arctic Ocean. I like to begin this program by providing the definition of a river. A river is a large natural stream of water emptying into an ocean, lake, or other body of water and usually fed along its course by converging. The Arctic boundary is often drawn along the Arctic Circle, 66 degrees longitude, 33 degrees longitude. But in places, the Arctic conditions manifest themselves in more southern regions. The Arctic Circle is a boundary north of which the sun never rises above the horizon during the winter solstice on December 21st and never sets during the summer solstice on June 21st. As we travel further north, the length of the polar day and polar night increases, reaching six months at the North Pole. During the long polar night, light comes only from the moon and northern lights. After studying the Arctic North for many years and also doing a narration for the Smoky God, I felt there were still too many unanswered questions. And hundreds of times thereafter, I still thought it was possible that the world's geography was incomplete. And the thought would come back and haunt my mind. Olaf Jansen's story. Olaf Jansen's story. Olaf Jansen had been a fisherman off the coast of Norway in the region of the Lofenden Islands from whence he had made many trips still farther north to Spitzenbergen and even to Franz Josef Land. But the statement that I found most interesting was the statement that was given by Olaf Jansen to George Emerson Willis and the statement read as follows. God created the earth for the within, that is to say, for its land, seas, rivers, mountains, forests, and valleys, and for its only other internal conveniences, while the outside surface of the earth is merely the veranda, the porch, where things grow by comparison, but sparsely like the lichen on the mountainside, clinging determinedly for bare existence. Olaf Jansen would then go on to say, Take an eggshell, and from each end break out a piece as large as the end of this pencil. Extract its contents, and then you will have a perfect representation of Olaf Jansen's earth. The distance from the inside surface to the outside surface, according to Jansen, is about 300 miles. The center of gravity is not in the center of the earth, but in the center of the shell and crust. Therefore, if the thickness of the earth's crust or shell is 300 miles, the center of gravity is 150 miles below the surface. And through the years and a great number of stories that I've narrated, in logbooks, Arctic explorers tell us of the dipping of the needle as a vessel sails in regions of the farthest north known. In the opening of this program, I gave you the definition of river. According to Olaf Jansen, in the beginning, this world of ours was created solely for the within world where are located the four great rivers, the Euphrates, the Pison, the Gihon, and the Hittical. And interestingly enough, these same names of rivers, when applied to streams on the outside surface of the earth, are purely traditional from an antiquity beyond the memory of man. And on the top of a high mountain near the fountainhead of these four rivers, Olaf Jansen, the Norseman, claims to have discovered the long-lost Garden of Eden, the veritable navel of the earth, and to have spent over two years studying and reconnoitering in this marvelous within land, exuberant with stupendous plant life and abounding in giant animals, a land where the people live to be centuries old after the order of Methuselah and other biblical characters, a region where one quarter of the inner surface is water and three quarters land, where there are large oceans and many rivers and lakes, where the cities are superlative in construction and magnificence, where modes of transportation are as far in advance as ours as we are with our boasted achievements are in advance of the inhabitants of darkest Africa. The old Norsemen also maintain that from the farthest points of land on the islands of Spitzenbergen and Franz Joseph land, flocks of geese may be seen annually flying still farthest north, just as the sailors and explorers recorded in their log books. No scientist has yet been audacious enough to attempt to explain even to his own satisfaction, toward what lands these winged fowls are guided by their subtle instinct. However, Olaf Jansen has given us a most reasonable explanation. The presence of the open sea in the Northland is also explained. Olaf Jansen claims that the northern aperture, intake or hole, so to speak, 
is about 1,400 miles across. And some of the rivers within Olaf Jansen claims are larger than our Mississippi and Amazon rivers combined in point of volume of water carried. Indeed, their greatness is occasioned by their width and depth rather than their length. And it is at the mouths of these mighty rivers as they flow northward and southward along the inside surface of the earth that mammoth icebergs are found, some of them 15 and 20 miles wide and from 40 to 100 miles in length. And would you not consider it strange that there has never been an iceberg encountered either in the Arctic or Antarctic Ocean that is not composed of fresh water? Modern scientists claim that freezing eliminates the salt, but Olaf Jansen claims differently. Ancient Hindu, Japanese, and Chinese writings, as well as hieroglyphics of the extinct races of the North American continent, all speak of the custom of sun worshipping, and it is possible in the starting light of Olaf Jansen's revelations that the people of the inner world lured away by glimpses of the sun as is shown upon the inner surface of the earth either from the northern or the southern opening became dissatisfied with the smoky god the great pillar or mother cloud of electricity and weary of their continuously mild and unpleasant atmosphere followed the brighter light and were finally led beyond the ice belt and scattered over the outer surface of the earth through asia europe north america and later africa australia and South America. On the northern boundaries of Alaska and still more frequently on the Siberian coast are found boneyards containing tusks of ivory in quantities so great as to suggest the burying places of antiquity. From Olaf Jansen's accounts they have come from the great prolific animal life that abounds in the fields and forests and on the banks of numerous rivers of the inner world. The materials were caught in the ocean currents or were carried on ice flows and have accumulated like driftwood on the Siberian coast. This has been going on for ages and hence these mysterious boneyards. And in eastern Siberia large quantities of ivory are dug out of the ground every year. Indeed some of the islands are believed to be nothing but accumulation of drift timber and the bodies of mammoths. And since the time of the Russian conquest of Siberia useful tusks from more than 20,000 mammoths have been collected. I now ask the question is there an inner earth? I believe the answer lies in the Arctic Ocean. The slide you are viewing now comes from the arctic.ru forward slash maps website. I will now show you the clues that I believe which would lead to the inner earth. Apart from small rivers, estuaries of major Eurasian and North American rivers including the Pechora, the Ob, Yanisai, Piencia, Yatanga, Anabar, Lena, Yana, and Darijka, Coma, Colville, and Mackenzie rivers are located in the continental Arctic. As a rule, those rivers flow through broad valleys and lowland sections, frequently forming large estuaries. The rivers influence the permafrost, pushing it far back from the valleys and destroying all permafrost under riverbeds. They are also instrumental in promoting a milder climate in nearby areas. Scientific evidence highlighting the influence of river waters on the seas can be found several hundred kilometers away from estuaries. Notably, such waters influence the hydrological and ice regime of regional seas. Small insular rivers get their waters from the snows or glaciers. Regional rivers freeze over for nine to ten months each year, and some of them freeze to the bottom. Continental rivers thaw every May to June and freeze in October. Insular rivers thaw in mid-July and freeze in early September. And history tells us that many Arctic areas were settled over 10,000 years ago, followed by northern areas of the Canadian Arctic Archipelago and Greenland. The Arctic population comprises indigenous ethnic groups and newcomers who brought various cultural traditions with them. The most homogeneous ethnic groups primarily comprise the Inuit in Canada and Greenland and live in the American Arctic. There are over 100,000 Inuit, including 1,500 in Siberia and southwestern Alaska. Diné Indians live inland in northern Alaska and western Canada. The American Arctic and Eurasian populations primarily migrated from the west to the east and from the south to the north along long river valleys, respectively. Do these Arctic rivers lead to an inner earth? The answer may be found by asking the Inuit Indians or the Diné Indians who live inland and northern Alaska and western Canada. I'd like to thank everyone for listening to and watching 
Arctic Secrets Revealed.